What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another Keyshot tutorial. Let's take a quick look at Keyshot 11's new physics simulation feature. Keyshot 11 has significantly expanded its collision detection tools by adding physics simulation, which now allows you to create animations of falling, bouncing, and sliding objects. To get started using the feature, you're gonna to wanna to have your scene open and the model, part, or parts you'd like to simulate positioned at the point you want your simulation to begin. For this demo, which you can find in our welcome window, I've used both the coffee beans and cold brew coffee bottle from the cloud library to stage the scene. I've also added a funnel to direct the flow of the falling coffee beans and stage the beans just above the funnel they'll fall into first. This will be my coffee bean start point for my simulation animation. To use physics simulation, you'll need to open the tools menu on the ribbon just above the real-time view and select physics simulation from the geometry tools. This will cause the physics simulation window to open, and from here you'll be able to select your geometry and adjust your settings before simulating. With the window open, you're going to have four areas to work from. Your simulation settings on the top left, where you'll be able to adjust your simulation time, keyframes, your quality, the gravity of your falling objects, as well as friction and bounciness. Your geometry view in the center, which will let you preview your geometry as it simulates, your scene tree on the right of the window, and the animation timeline along the bottom. In the case of this scene, I want my coffee beans to fall independently, so I'm going to select my coffee bean groups from my scene tree on the right, and then I'll click the As Parts checkbox under the settings on the left. I'll then make any adjustments I feel are necessary. In this case, I'm not gonna be changing many of these settings for this specific simulation, but you may need to make further adjustments on your end depending on what it is you're simulating. I'm going to start by setting my simulation time at three seconds since this is gonna be a quick simulation, but you can also leave this parameter at zero and the simulation will automatically end once all parts you're simulating have finished settling. This can be incredibly useful when you aren't sure exactly how long your simulation might take. I'm also going to adjust my keyframes per second to 60 instead of the default 30. Essentially, keyframes per second are the amount of data points that will be created during your simulation. I'm planning on pulling a few still images from my final animation timeline, so I'm going to double the keyframes in order to have twice as many frames to pick still images from at the end. If you don't need stills, I recommend simulating with the default keyframes to speed up your simulation time. I'll leave my simulation quality at 0.1. This parameter is pretty self-explanatory and will help you increase your simulation's quality if needed. I'll leave gravity at the default since it represents real-world gravity. I'll also leave friction and bounciness at their default values as well. However, if I were creating a sliding animation, I definitely need to adjust friction. And if I were animating a material that might bounce more when contacting a surface, I would need to increase my bounciness. In context to friction, the default value is a general average of realistic friction in a real-world environment. Obviously, different materials moving against each other will exhibit different levels of friction, so be sure to adjust the setting to match your created material's perceived friction when simulating. One tends to look very natural for most use cases, but the parameter can be adjusted from zero, meaning no friction, to five, which essentially creates so much friction that your object will not slide at all. With parts selected and settings adjusted, I'm now ready to begin my simulation by clicking the Begin Simulation button just under the settings parameters. Once the simulation begins, you'll notice a spinning icon showing that your scene is being simulated and you'll be able to visibly see your animation coming to life in the center geometry view. You can also stop your simulation at any time by hitting that same button you use to start the simulation. This will save the simulation's progress to that point and populate your animation timeline with the calculated information. Once complete, your simulation will be added to the animation timeline, and you can scrub through to preview your newly created animation. If satisfied, hit the OK button at the bottom right of your window, and the simulation is ready to be rendered. Hopefully with this short intro to physics simulation, you'll be able to really kick off some incredible animations and still renders for your future Keyshot projects. As always, if you're interested in more useful Keyshot content, hit that subscribe button and get notified as soon as new videos hit the channel. Don't forget to let us know your thoughts on this tutorial in the comment section below. And if you found this video useful, give it a like and share.